Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to today's conversation. And we're so excited to have our guest here, Anna Konya, joining us here, who is a intuitive abstract artist and empath born in Romania, but now residing in Albania. And the beauty of technology as we come to you from Albania, the UK and Africa. So welcome, Anna. Good evening and good morning or good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are globally. And it's my big, big honor and pleasure to be here with these beautiful ladies tonight. So thank you for inviting me. And I'd like to say and acknowledge Sarah Jane, our other co-host here with me and my partner. And we're excited to have you here, Anna. And wow, that's a lot. You are an intuitive abstract artist, an empath. And when we talk about intuitiveness, why don't you share how intuitiveness plays a role in your artwork? Well, when I started to make my art, I didn't even know the, how is this is called. So I just, did it in and then after years somebody said to me well you are making it intuitively and i was like well yes i am i'm not following any pattern i'm not copying i'm not uh, uh i'm not uh, like i i did not learn it in in, in uh, university in school so i whatever it was just uh, on the paper or on the canvas it was just uh, me coming from some place what I, in that time, I had no, had no idea what it is. I just felt a really big urge to put it on paper, to use it in colors and, um, and to express something what it was within me. And, uh, and it was like willing to explode and, and willing to be expressed. And uh, for many, many years, especially my younger age, uh, of course, we are not paying so much attention to our intuition, to our inner voice or whatever it is that we don't even know what it because we were following the trends and the fashion and we just want to be just like the other ones. And if we have by the chance a character or, or, a, or a personality which is different from the others, we try to suppress it because all we want to be just like all the others and to be normal whatever that means normality so now i am i realize that being normal is actually who i am now and and uh, and then who is out there uh well it, they are living in a different norm so and uh yes intuitive abstract art what i'm doing it is actually the reflection of of, of a soul and through my soul, it's a reflection to the connection to the to, to to everything because our soul, well, it is connected to God, to source, to everything around us. So it's like a uh, universe expressing itself through me. And mm. it's funny because when I had my first exhibition a couple of years ago, I know what I actually expressed, and but the feeling is still the same. Every time I am taking a to or something, I have the feeling like a door, like God is opening a door. I'm stepping through a gate in a completely different world, a world where uh, there is harmony, there is peace, there is joy, and, and the colors are all the colors what are calming and, and rebalancing something within me. And I am becoming part of this pureness. And I, I, I can't compare it with as like, like us being just a simple entity, whole, no, no damage done, no harm done to us. And um, I think through our and through making and tapping into this, making intuitive art, 
it will i from my point of view it's like mm -hmm. for everyone it is it is available for all of us uh what it's needed i think from my side it was bravery to take the pen and start and don't care if somebody's watching you don't care if somebody's judging you and do not care if somebody is having a different point of view or different view of anything because you know in five give yourself five minutes but in that five minutes you are healing yourself in the most amazing way and yeah. um, this is how up into it abstract intuitive art making but it's but i'm doing painting art but intuitive you can sing mm -hmm. in in languages what you may not even know yes because and so, then you are using a language of your own soul yes beautiful and sarah jane so i've never really been good at art per se but we all have the ability the ability to be creative in some way and if we can be creative using color i think that's really important because life isn't black and white life is every color of the rainbow of the spectrum our chakra energies are the colors of the rainbow look at nature she isn't monochrome she is multicolored and she doesn't care where she puts the colors nature just blooms and it works and so i think really it's a matter of allow your creativity and it as, as you said anna it doesn't matter what other people think you know my creativity tends to come out in lots of different ways actually um and it definitely seems to come out in my knitting um because <laughs> i've knitted one blanket and i'm on the second one now um but i've made it out of triangles and they're all different colors so it, so in that respect, you could class it a work of art, but it is it, it, yeah, but it, it, is. it is about you know, just enjoy it, enjoy the process. And okay, the first blanket, it was just like my mother's fallen in love with it, and so she's got it. <laughs> sort of, you know, sort of I don't know what's gonna happen with the second one at the moment, but just to have a little bit of belief in yourself and if you see i've seen artwork that i can appreciate the talent that has gone into it but i haven't liked the subject matter at all because it was to do with still life and a dead hair or something it was exquisitely painted but I would never have given it house room. And it was, and it was a very expensive painting. It was a, an antiques art fair, <laughs> you know, sort of, but because it's not my thing. Um, it doesn't have to be your thing for you to appreciate something. And that creativity True. is almost about freedom. You're giving your soul to express in this life yeah. for me. That's so beautiful. And I'm sitting yes, here thinking I about, do. oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's a little bit of delay in the sound and I'm just. No problem. So, uh, yes, I think art and creativity, uh, in creativity in general, it is, it has a big desire to you to be uh, willing to be free. Mm -hmm. And most of the people what I am seeing, they are not sure that they are willing to be free. Because freedom, it's a lot of reality. Um, and the responsibility, it's a hell out of scary thing. 
and doing something what it's uh, it was never done before. It doesn't have a form or a shape or a color. And you to dare to take the free that, okay, now I'm going to make something. I don't give whatever, how it will look in them. Uh, also with the children, when I am having my classes, I, always, I, I constantly have to repeat, it doesn't matter the final product, how it looks like product or whatever is the process that during the process of making it that feel joyful that you are your uh, imagination that you are actually just just splash into the colors and be in that moment and i noticed when the children and myself as well when we are just tapping into that the final product actually it is amazing so when, when you finish it and you are like, okay, stepping back, I'm done. I, I'm enjoy, I enjoyed it. And it's visible that the joy, what you are having, it is there on, on, on the canvas. And even the canvas is happy to have those colors on it. So it's like, a, I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe it's a co-creation of us <laughs> together, like the canvas, the painting, and then we are doing something all together but without really thinking too much. I always say the clients when they are coming to my studio that live in reality and your mind at the doorstep. So, but, I mean, <laughs> you, you just leave it there. In yeah. Do not think, just feel and let it flow. And um, it's a bravery to do that. Well, it's interesting that you say that. You it's 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 interesting that you say that also, Anna, because one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is that in I know traditional painting, and I say traditional meaning that there's a subject in front of you, there is an energetic flow from that subject, whether that subject happens to be an object or a person or anything like that, and a lot of times you can capture the energy of that object or that person. But when you're drawing abstract, in fact, that there's not really an object, you're being really informed inwardly. So how does that work? How, how do you capture the energy of what you're doing when you're painting abstract? How you can, well, my experience is that uh, it's really about disconnecting the rational mind and then um, this form, I don't know, somehow your hand, the color uh, and, and something within you knows the shape which you don't know it yet. You cannot express it in 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 in, in words or or or, uh, or whatever. But uh, you do create something. What intuitively you know that it it, it exists, and that has an energy. I, I I even would dare to say that we are creating something out of us. It's not our design. It is drawing, is that painting decided to have a shape. It's like us when we decided to incarnate and have a life. I, it might be that even at these paintings, they decided, I want, I, I want to have a shape, I want to have a form, I want to have a lifetime, which starts created by this artist through her or through you, and that maybe I'm going to live a short lifetime because somehow I'm going to be destroyed, or maybe I'm going to be in museums for, for centuries and people will uh, come by and, and see me and share their thoughts, their feelings with me. And then I'm going to have an impact on so many people. You, you cannot actually 
maybe that is happening, that these artworks or these creations, like like really symphony is what we are having. Maybe the symphony itself wanted to have a shape already. And then using the intuition of someone, of a composer, it came to the life. So in this case, uh, I think the model itself, it's creating itself and we are just a channel to it. I don't Sarah know if that is uh, vibrating or, or... I think... You, I when, just... when, when... Sorry. No, no, no. Well, I was going to say, when you think about how many people have said that piece of wood, that piece of stone, it already knew what it was going to be. The, the person that chiseled it out was just bringing to life what was already in there. That that piece of wood or stone already yes. knew the form it was going to take. And that sounds to me exactly what you're saying with your, your abstract art. It's almost as if that canvas, that piece of paper already knows what it chooses to show to the world. It's interesting yes, that you say I that, Sarah. Oops, I, I want to interject. It's interesting that you're saying that because I, I sketch a little bit, okay? And I paint also just a little bit. I'm not, that's, that's not my, my vocation. But one of the things that I've always noticed when I'm sketching is that when I'm energetically connected to that object or energetically connected you know, to what I'm doing and what I'm sketching, whether it's land or object or anything, that it actually informs me when it's done. It actually informs me and tells me, okay, I'm complete or no, you haven't finished me yet. There's more color to be seen. There's more detail to be seen. Is, is that the case in abstract? Is that the case when you paint also? Yes, yeah. Um, I had some some artworks I made and I never had, had the feeling it's not finished. I was interrupted or something happened that I was distracted in the moment when I was creating it and uh, and two years passed and every time I was passing by and I was it's not it's not complete it's something it's missing it's still not the right one it's not what it should have been, but it wasn't, I didn't know because I was trying with my rational mind, like, what is this? And, uh, and then uh, it did happen that uh, I woke up 3 a.m. in the night and uh, I came out, I took it and suddenly I was just like making something. And when seven o'clock in the morning, I woke up again, I came out and I was like, oh, so now you are finished because you, decided to finally arrive there because maybe I was again in that emotion or in that energy field. And then uh, it was just calling me like, okay, now we are again in that uh, vibration. We can finish this one. The rationality, I could not even touch it. I was like, mm, I don't know. I, it's, it's not, it has no sense for me. And, uh, it's always a big question when to stop when you are painting, when you consider that it's finished. And uh, I do have a feeling that actually work itself says, okay, I'm done. Don't touch me anymore. I, it, it's perfectly fine as it is. And uh, my big, but that's quite human. I have trouble waiting until it's drying. I'm like, don't touch it, don't touch it. It I wait until it's completely dry because uh, well that's the moment where you can actually destroy it in a way because uh, you just want to see is it is it dry is it dry and then you put your finger there and I'm like oh I shouldn't so yes uh, I do believe they do have their own life and. Uh, um, it says that a child 
that the mother is feeling or there's a call of the unborn child that the mother before to give birth it will dream or, or the call of that child but i think it was a similar it's like uh i already know that those white canvas is what i brought today they already know what they want to be or they 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 will have their shape they know it i still don't know it because I'm, I'm i'm still just like tapping into that and um it's interesting how uh how I'm, how I'm choosing the colors, you know, like I'm seeing so many artists. I think every artist is amazing in its own way. And uh, I'm not mentioning the talent. There are so many talented people out there. And uh, and also, you know, how you were in classical way of making art, like you have a model and then you are uh, following the energy or, or the going into perfection. And... Uh, it is it is uh, in 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 this case what i am doing is just the colors and then sometimes looking oh who is the green one okay then 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 let's use the green one and uh, it happens that uh, i i want to be a little bit more strict with myself preparing the edges and everything that Oh, I'm going to be net and clean and whatever. And then I end up that I am full paint because I'm painting with my hand. <laughs> because in that moment when I start to do it, I'm disconnected from, from this world. And, and, and then I am just that thing. I am together with the painting, with the canvas and with the source and and it's just pure joy. It's it's like sometimes I'm listening uh, different emo, um, emissions or whatever they are having like, and you hear like uh, this addition and that addiction and this happens and that happens. And I'm like, they should paint <laughs> and then everybody would be just happy and fine because it's like really, uh, I don't know, it's pure joy. <laughs> for me <laughs> yes yes Sarah Jane I think for all of us it it it's it is it's whether it's painting whether it's drawing whatever it is and I do I actually have you know obviously the adult coloring books <laughs> I have got a couple of those and but you know it's, it's getting hold of the right crayons because some of them are so pale in color and my thing is actually, I want to see lovely, bold, bright colors. It really is important to me that it it comes to life. And actually it's right here. Um, and this was bought for me, um, WWF. So the Worldwide Fund for Nature. And so their very first one, whoops, that way. And that's the panda. And it was sort of, oh, I don't actually, if I think, yeah, I have this, yeah. And so, but obviously it was just fill it with color. But I would love to have had the colors to be brighter. You know, and, and you know, obviously it's, it's definitely the panda shaped head, but it's very abstract within what's in it. And you can have such fun with it. <laughs> If you haven't got that, you, you, you feel restricted that you have to have some sort of guidance, then that's the way to go. Because, you know, obviously I, ha obviously I haven't done much in the book, but then the, there's the turtle. So you've got all those different shapes that you can fill in with different colors. So if you're, if you're concerned about or wary about doing something yourself from a blank canvas, then something like the adult coloring books is a really great place to start. That's wonderful. And you know, that leads me right into my next question that I wanted to ask, which is how does healing take place as we are doing our artwork? 
You know, some of us look at the healing as the vibration of the colors and the colors vibrate a certain way and it gives us peace and, you know, like a cool color, like let's say blue, instead of having anxiety would, would calm you down because it brings peace and warmth and, and kind of that flow like water, you know, versus fiery red. But how, how does healing take place for you when you're, when you're, working with your art? Well, <clears throat> healing can happen in many years and in many aspects. So um, first, the colors what we are using is, of course, it's never a coincidence. Colors are talking. Um, when I'm working also with my clients, um, uh, we are always talking after that about the emotions, what they were going through, why they were choosing different colors, why you were putting the sun in this side and not on that side. Why? Because in a composition, let's say uh, in a in a healing process or in a healing session, uh, everything a uh, uh, symbolism, but. Uh, through art, from from my point of view, my healing was uh, was a lot of discharging uh, uh, energies. What 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 was uh, blocked within me? I was literally feeling that putting things on on uh, on the paper uh, from one day to another, I was feeling lighter. I was feeling more free. And um, uh, well, ten years ago, when when uh, I got ill, uh, I still didn't know what's happening. I was like, "What it is this?" And then uh, when I started to draw out everything, it was really like uh, from one day to another, I was just uh, better feeling. And then I realized it was like really like a medicine, and I realized that. Uh, if I'm skipping a day drawing, I'm not doing well. So, and then uh, now, after years taking uh, and what seeing my old uh, artworks, I realized that they are uh, immensely full with a different symbol and uh, and um, and the, what I I was so much talkative. And uh, I think uh, how it is healing. First, for example, for people who are suffering of anxiety, uh, and uh, it also does. It's, it does matter what kind of art you are choosing, what kind of uh, method you are choosing, because um, every person. And this is why I'm saying use your intuition. What it's calming you. So if if you are you wish to uh, treat your anxiety and then making these coloring books, what uh, Sarah Jane was uh, making you even more stressed, of course not for you, then then, then you can uh, do something different, like really just have a big canvas and some colors and use your hand. Uh, I, uh, um, all our senses are ready to collaborate with us. Because our body is seeking balance, and all us, all our senses, our eye, our, our the touch, the hearing, uh, are waiting for us to decide that we wish to be healthy. Because unbalance uh, in in the body, it is it is not making ourselves happy. Also, so when when you start to use your your fingers and you the the touch of the cold paint and then how how this can take a shape it is actually a joy and then well i'm not a doctor i don't know the endorphins and and uh, whatever hormones are released in this moment i just that feel physically better like more calm and when we are more calm, our heart rate, it's a little bit slower. And then you can actually, when, you know, like suddenly you have the feeling that, 
my lungs are bigger, more air is somehow coming into my lungs and more air I can breathe in, more oxygen is in my, in my veins, in my blood, uh, then my brain, it's like, you know, cleaned in a way. And um, it's, just, uh, it's just an amazing feeling. Uh, it's also helping sometimes, like you are creating something and uh, of course the pattern of how we were teach that mm. you have to do this, you have to do that, that this has to be, sometimes it's kicking in. Many times I'm seeing also at my clients that they arrive and then they, they want to do something perfect and then I'm like, okay, okay, now we are stopping here. And we close our eyes. And when you close your eyes, you can call in the colors. Breathe in and breathe out. And then um, you call the colors. And then they come to you. And then they open their eyes after two minutes. And then suddenly it's just like, you know, like, okay. And then, and then it's just coming everything intuitively. Because... There is a resistance of the of the rational mind, you know, the, the ego doesn't want to let go the control. But uh, when that it, it is happening, when you actually ask for, please allow me and call the colors. So in my case, he I I didn't even I realized after one year that I am healing myself through the art. And I started to fight for it. If somebody wanted to take away art from me, I was like a lioness. I was like, you can take anything, but not my colors, not my drawing, nothing. I, I am fine without anything, but don't take away my colors. And and then when uh, it happened two years ago that we got locked down from one day to another, and I was in a country where there was no developed uh, online delivery there, I had no idea. So I got into the point that I was missing art supplies. And then suddenly I really had to be creative how to survive lockdown all around me. in a country. I don't know what was that in my apartment. <laughs> However, uh, then I realized that I can use everything around me because now also with the kids, we are recycling, reusing, giving you a shape form to everything everything what you have in a household can be a tool for your healing you just let that thing call you you can you can use whatever and this is how it happens that i am now um in my my artworks i am using in the alarm chicken wire net so why not and uh, yes, um, tools are everywhere. And art, it's, it's life-saving, at least in my case. <laughs> so, I don't know. Beautiful, beautiful. Please. And Sarah Jane? I, I think it's really the lockdown really had to bring out people's creativity, didn't it? in so many different yes. ways it it really did because you know it doesn't matter whether you were somewhere where you could potentially get things delivered if they weren't essential then you know it was only essentials that were available initially um and so yes if there was something missing <laughs> that wasn't essential you had to become creative um, yes. and I think, and I yeah, think, yeah. And I I think yes, and you know, I'm sitting it here. It was so amazing that I remember. Go ahead. 
It was so amazing. <laughs> no, I remember in the lockdown period, it was a, a moment where my father was saying, so you were talking on video call and he was saying, but you have bed sheets, you can use them as canvas, so you can paint on that. It doesn't <laughs> matter if you need paint the wall, paint whatever, just, just keep yourself sane. So in that moment, I was really uh, like, my mental health is priority. I don't care about anything else. I, I need my art. I need, I need to tap into my world and then it can happen, whatever it's happening in the world. Just give me paint and, and canvas or, or brushes and whatever that I can go on forever like that. So it was really uh, a challenging in the mom in that in a positive way because it, it it I think not just for me also for every one of us in this period was bringing out uh, such an amazing uh, pulse what we were having it hidden inside us. And suddenly it was just like, obviously, oh, but I can do this and I can do that. And that was also a healing for all of us because in that mental health was where I think the priority. I am a person who had a TV in the house with dust, but I'm not turning it on. So I really had to do something and then I did it. Yeah. So then when we look at art and we look at all of the energetics that come together, how does meditation play a role? How does meditation play a role as you're painting, as you're going through the healing process? I mean, do you meditate? Do you, do you, does it have a role in like the art therapy that takes place? Yes. Well, I um, I have my arguments with the word meditation, what it means exactly, and how we I oh, I I do I do meditate my way. I don't know. Nobody ever teached me or showed me or or explained me that you should do it like this. Of course, there is YouTube, and then you tap into and then you listen and then you are like mm, it's not it's 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 not what i wish i it's not what i feel and then at certain point after you were searching and googling and listening and whatever you just push away everything and then that's the moment when you start to meditate when you listen to your own self what what balances me so for me the meditation making art it's a form of meditation of course but for example i when i meditate i'm talking i am just connecting to whoever is uh, and uh, well maybe 20 is having a clinical clinical case and uh, take us or i take me to to i don't know uh, a hospital saying that oh this girl it's it's a little bit like crazy but I am talking and through talking somehow um, I don't know if anybody has or it's just me like uh, when you ask source or the beyond or universe God name it who and how you wish you ask questions and it's coming the answer through goosebumps well that's my case so when i am i am i know that i am in the right place and i know that i am doing something good if i do have the reaction if nothing happens i'm like okay so okay that's that was not the right thing so i'm not going to do it and i don't know how long it's taking i never count the hours or the minutes sometimes i have the feeling that uh, I, I've been talking five minutes and then I'm silenting myself. And somehow then it's possible to just connect and my mind is free and it's, it's really uh, zero thoughts. And when, when I arrived in that point, uh, I, I realized that uh, for me, in my case, expressing myself through art was the, the, the channel where my mind could release a lot of pain, 
a lot of uh, uh, unspoken things. And when we are really, because might be that for most of us, finding a way to let things have a shape or be expressed, it, it doesn't blow anymore our mind, you know? And when our, because our mind is mostly connected with our ego and it's ruled by, by control and fear and all these uh, negative, so low energies, low frequencies. But when, when I gave shape to my biggest fear, it loses, loses its power. I can see you, I can feel, I can, I can touch you, I can talk to you, I can say I love you. You are my fear. But I am not wishing you to rule me. And when through the art, or in my, yes, through art, or through talking, or giving shape to what it's, uh, it is inside us, struggling us, or hurting us. Um, somehow it is losing its power because until it's shapeless and it's, you don't know exactly what it is. It's like when you, you know that you have a sickness, but you still don't have the diagnosis. And this uncertainty, it is what our, our ego and our fears are embracing and then making it big, you know? And then you realize that it is not an elephant, it's a, whatever, a bug. So uh, demystifying our fears, it's helping, and art is helping demystifying the fear. Because then you realize that it's not so big. I'm not afraid of a bug. Um, I might be afraid of an elephant, but I can deal with a bug. <laughs> you no? Know? Yeah. I'm more likely to be afraid of a bug so... than an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> it's perception. It's all about perception. No, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely about perception. So, Enolia, when you're during your drawing, do you think you're you find yourself in a meditative state, or do you? Know, how do you, what? How does it make you feel? Mm. I'm I'm in another world. I'm definitely in another world, and it's the relationship between me and the object, or me and the uh, scenery that I'm, I'm, I'm drawing or, or, and I literally just tap into that energy and I feel it and it guides me. I haven't been drawing very long. And, um, so for, for me, you know, I, how I learned was just definitely to allow that, that the energy of that object to, to, uh, share and tell me what to do. I can share one piece that I've, I've drawn. I'm, I'm going to do it because we're going to have Anna do it too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so um, I've, I've learned to draw people. And um, in, in doing that, it's, it's just that I capture that person, that person's face, that person's um, thought. But the, the most fun that I had was drawing a self-portrait. And I drew myself at when I was in the third grade. And so this was my drawing of myself. And I just, I loved it because it was just like the picture that I took it from was still me, you know, and feeling the energy of me and feeling the energy of the fact that that youth and that, you know, the light in my eyes because I had the whole world in front of me, you know, and it was just a moment in time. It was a moment in time. And I also found that that's when I really started acknowledging light, 
how light plays, how light dances, how light affects, how light shadows. All of those pieces are really, really significant. And I never looked at light before. I never looked at the dance of light and, and where it can play and how it can hide and, and, and show in places that you wouldn't think because you, you didn't really take the time to look. And so I, I love it. I, I find it meditating. I find it fascinating. I find it fascinating where people draw from to create it, to uh, show the inside out, you know? And um, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. It really is. Excellent. Anna, I know you've got some, some obviously the, the, work, the artwork on the wall behind you is all yours. But you were talking about symbols within your artwork. Is there anything that you've got there that could show us what you mean? Or have I just asked you the question you were not expecting? <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have that. So let me just see the drawings here. While you're looking, I would just say for example. Oh, go ahead. Is this one, for example? Mm. Um, well, it's not so much in this because this is a mixture of, of painting and drawing. So uh, mostly I am always making the eyes and the lips exaggerated. All my drawings are they were very detailed and very exaggerated, everything. And if you see the eyes, I'm never making in the classical way. I'm always using different patterns and uh, um, which were, and, and then you see the, this is, it's like the center of Mother Earth. And um, yeah, well, this is just, what I have suddenly here because I have to go on the other side for more. There is one more I can show you. Just one second. Because <laughs> I don't know about you, Nolia, but that one behind looks like a lion's face to me. Yeah, it is. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, with the lion, I was just, well, I'm a lion. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. That's gorgeous. And I'm not really having a monocolor, so that's, I, I think, one or two drawings I have which are not colored, and one of them is, so I try to hold it in a way that, because if this is framed, so, so beautiful. I don't know if it's visible. Um, yeah. Okay. I like it. this is more visible. Ah. You know, like very detailed and um, yeah, well, it is, it is, it is. I don't know if it's anyone gorgeous. sees me. Yes. We can, we can see the whole thing. Okay, so the drawings, what were in my healing process were, well, minimum this detail or even more. And uh, I was seeing a lot of, uh, well, you know, we have the, every, uh, Every nation has its symbols and uh, uh, patterns. What are used, you know, like uh, in in uh, in in how it says in English, sewing or or it, or sewing. food uh, sculpture. And, uh, but then a, f a few which are not region and uh, as. Uh, I am using 
but I love, I am not really fond of pastel colors. I don't like to diminuate the, the power of a color. I like it to have really a vibe. And everybody was like, uh, but this is not Europe. From where are you or what are you doing? Because this is, this is not really, um, uh, let's say, um, European style. I'm like, I don't know. And then talking that why I'm making so big lips and so big eyes. It's like uh, South America or even Africa, uh, you know, where, where all these nations, these beautiful nations are using all these vibrating colors. And I was like, I don't know where my soul was wandering in previous lifetimes, but it was enjoying it for sure because it still brings the same colors. So those countries, those colors are somehow imprinted in me. It wants to be alive. If it wants to have a sh shape, so here they are. <laughs> so yes, well, my my paintings are not so detailed. They are more spacious and they are more like uh, I don't know, having 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 how it says. I don't know in English, you know, like character. Yeah, yes, it's yes. giving you a hint like, okay, you do something, express yourself. What I'm curious always to hear first the impression of others, what do you see? Because if I am telling you what I did, then I am chewing in your mouth thing and then I'm giving you a shape. But I'm more curious what is your vibration, what is your soul feeling, what is your heart feeling? So, yeah. This is, but uh, I think as an Olia and you also making art or using your creativity, it is something uh, underrated globally. And I'm happy to uh, in in the educational systems slowly, slowly the creativity, art, and the significance of art, it is uh, gaining more space. And uh, we are uh, not considered anymore lunatics or, or, I don't know, somehow a secondary uh, part of, of society. And I'm always trying to remind people because, uh, well, I'm returning a bit to the lockdown and the last two years uh, it did happen to me that uh, friends and I'm quite sure that they were making their suggestion with a good heart and with a good intention saying that well art doesn't have a future so you have to do something different you must find something else for your life because art it's out of fashion and it's it's not going to have any future. And I was like really upset, like oh, how? And then I said like, it's not true. Try to spend your lockdown without listening music, without watching a movie, reading a book, um, having a cartoon, uh, whatever, listening, it, this is all art. Yeah. By artists, this is all made by people who dare to use their creativity. Yeah. So what are we talking about? Art is everywhere in everything. And activity, it's in building a building, making a home, cooking a meal. It is all creativity, and uh, and I do build a uh, web designer. Uh, you need to be creative how to make it, how to how to create, actually give a shape with colors you use. And I do believe that is of of our everyday life. It's lying in creativity, in a in an emergency situation. From where 
it's our mind taking the solutions from where we solely say it, instinctively we do we do it right five minutes later somebody's asking you how did you do it you don't know because you did it without questioning yourself without wondering or analyzing you were just tapping to something what it was there always you just were not aware of it this is intuition yes i don't know what are your opinion about this i love it because one of the things that i see within art are and when it comes to shapes and symbols is the sacred geometry and so when you talk about symbolism and when you talk about shape and when you talk about what it is that we incorporate in our art that gives it the energy that it does as we capture it it's the fact that we do interpret it the way we choose to interpret it and as we do that, we are drawing from the sacred geometries of, of, of light, sound, everything, of, of the environment, even in abstract. The beauty of how things come to form their shapes and their, and their, and their colors and everything to me just screams sacred geometry. So I, 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 I get it. <laughs> I get it. Sarah Jane, what do you think? Well, I, no, I, I think just allowing our creativity and just respecting others' creativity. It doesn't matter whether we, we like it or not. It's, right. going to, it's going to speak to some people. It's not going to speak to others. You know, you may love the John Constable's The Haywain, but you may not. You think, okay great picture but doesn't do anything for me you may be well into Picasso or not I mean, <laughs> it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter it it will speak to some not everybody is going to speak to everybody and that is exactly as it should be and so and being able to allow yourself to be creative giving yourself the freedom to be creative in if it's needlework if it's painting drawing if you're just doing black and white pencil sketches or sort of with chalks and and charcoal if you're doing pottery or woodwork it doesn't matter writing songs as you said it is all artistry all of it is artistry it is. and it, different things speak to different people in different ways and that is what it's about and but yeah that's what we were saying you know it, it's not just a picture it's not just the words of a song or the music it's not just a carving there is real energy that has come from it and has been put into it. Can we open ourselves to the vastness that is within us, the ability within us, whatever it may be? And I know we've got to come to an end because of the timing. So, <laughs> <laughs> and Anna, thank you so much for sharing this. We'll, and I will make sure that this is under the video. Now, folks, I do appreciate it. If anybody's got a question for Anna, will you please ask it now before we come to an end? <laughs> or you can contact her and we'll make sure that the, all her information is on the, under the YouTube video. We have had some glitches with this tonight. It has not been perfect, not from what I've seen. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm sure that what I see is what will come out on the video I've obviously been able to hear and understand enough, and I hope that you have as well. But obviously it is, it hasn't been perfect. It's technology. We're relying on the art of technology. <laughs> um, but Anna, please share your website, um, how people can get in touch with you. And as I said, I'll make sure it's under the um, video on YouTube. Now on work.
Yes, please share now. Should I say it now? Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, um, on my website, uh, it's a blog actually. There are, it's, it's like a journey of my my healing and uh, every blog um, writing has a picture attached. Uh, that is going to be renewed within the next uh, half a year. Mm, I am able. I am reachable on uh, Instagram page uh, Konyana Art and Facebook. Uh, I have also my Facebook page, which is Anna Konya Abstract Art. So, in generally, uh, these are the three platforms where uh, my works are shared and uh, my writings, my um, my thoughts, and uh, and also uh, there I can be reached out with questions and. Uh, and if somebody is interested in having a good talk or knowing more about my artworks, thank you very much. It, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you to Anolia. Thank you to Anna. Yeah. Um, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, in a fortnight's time, 27th of April. Now, this is the program that unfortunately didn't happen last month because of major technical issues for Anolia and for Kellen. Um, I was the only one who was able to get into the into the theater, but you didn't have any internet and Kellen had huge problems as well. So next month, so sorry, 27th, forgiveness, a journey of a journey of courage to a place of freedom. Uh, Kellen Fluckiger. And forgiveness, I think is a, a really powerful conversation. I'm sure that we are going to be able to have with Kellen. Uh, so I hope that you will join us for that. Thank you, folks, for joining us for tonight. Thank you to Anna and Anolia. And um, I hope that you've been able to hear enough, bearing in mind the three different countries we were coming from tonight, um, <laughs> and that you've enjoyed the program. But please do, if you've got any questions, connect with myself, Anolia, or Anna. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, folks. Night night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.